Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Barry Unsworth's novel, The Songs of the Kings. I'll talk a little bit about the, the author's background. I'll go into a brief spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, finish it off with uh, what I will be reading for next time. Uh, Barry Unsworth is a author primarily known for his historical fiction. I believe he won the Booker Prize for uh, his novel on the slave trade, which I believe is called Sacred Hearts. Uh, I've never read any of his other stuff. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years. Uh, the book that I did read, The Songs of the Kings, I read it on ebook, so unfortunately I don't have a uh, cover to share with you. But what the, the book is, it's a... Uh, retelling of a brief section of the overall narrative of the Trojan War, uh, which is primarily culled from the writings of Homer uh, from the, the Iliad. This portion of the novel covers uh, the time when the Greeks are gathered at the port of, I believe it's uh, Arlis or Aulis, and they are waiting to sail uh, from there to Troy to siege Troy. And they can't because the winds are preventing them from, from moving. So the novel is basically um, about the characters coming to grips with why they can't leave, why they've angered the gods, and what they need to do to appease the gods. So if you're familiar with the Trojan War, uh, this is kind of a story you know already. Um, uh, so I don't want to go into any spoilers if you're unfamiliar with that part of it. I think what's interesting about this book is, even though this is a story that's been told before, I think Barry Unsworth does a good job of finding uh, the human drama within it. Uh, and he kind of gives his own spin on some of the characters that you may know already. So Odysseus is one of the main characters. Agamemnon is one of the main characters. Menelaus, the, two, the Ajax, Ajax, the lesser Ajax, the smaller. So these are kind of well-known characters. But he gives them, he finds a way to give them personalities, and he finds ways to make them interesting, even though you may have known them as stereotypes. Odysseus is a good example of a character he takes who's known for being clever, but he also gives him a layer of pettiness to him that makes him feel more human. And he also does a good job of, he tells the story from narrators who are not those characters. So the two kind of main viewpoint narrators um, of this story are, I believe his name is pronounced Colchis, who is a priest uh, who's kind of gained the ear of Agamemnon and is kind of trying to give him prophetic visions uh, to gain his favor. He's actually a priest from Asia Minor and the closest god in the Greek uh, Parthenon uh, to his god that he worships is Apollo. Um, and so he is kind of an outsider coming in, and that kind of gives it a different flavor. And there's also other kind of prophets and singers in the court who kind of have their own political machinations and stuff and kind of watching that progress. There's also a character who is was taken as a slave, and she's the other kind of viewpoint character in the novel uh, who um, serves as a servant. Um, to a very important character. Again, I don't want to kind of spoil it, but uh, her viewpoint and kind of her being a, an enslaved person and kind of how that affects her viewpoint and how it affects her sense of duty, I thought all those things were done really superbly and it really gave a sense of, even this is a story that's taking place thousands of years ago, it definitely still felt current and the po politics felt real. So I really appreciate that and the story becomes kind of uh, serious and even though there's some seriousness to it, there is ways that he kind of inserts some levity into it so it's not so um, important all the time. There's some, some comedic moments which kind of help it going. The only real downside I had to it, I think, was uh, I actually wish that this is a 300 book and it covers a very, very small portion of the Trojan War. And uh, I wish it had gone for longer, uh, but it probably would have become uh, maybe too massive for him to have done other other parts of it in addition to this. It's kind of interesting. This is kind of a smaller known story of what he would have done uh, of, you know, the death of, death of Achilles or something like that. It would have been interesting. And I don't know. I need to check out some of his other works because I really did enjoy it. The only other downside I had to it is pretty minor. 
there's some moments of profanity of kind of the use of modern day profanity in the book that I'm I'm almost positive is anachronistic and that kind of pulled me out of it a little bit. It's nothing that'll I think ruin anybody's enjoyment of it, but it did kind of bother me at some some, some points. So I recommend it if you're someone who's a fan of Greek mythology or Greek history. I definitely think if you're familiar with the Trojan War that you'll enjoy this. Even if you're not, uh, I do think you probably need some kind of uh, background knowledge. I think it's going to be a little bit uh, confusing if you come in completely cold. So I, I would do a little bit of research, but even something like uh, the Trojan War podcast or just reading a Wikipedia page so you kind of know who all the characters are. Uh, but I think the more familiar you are with the story, I think the more you will enjoy it. So that's who I recommend the book to. Next time I'm going to be re reading... Missoula by John Krakauer. Until next time, please feel free to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure uh, to follow me on Twitter and uh, comment below if there's anything else that you've read by Barry Unsworth that you I uh, think is worthy of, of other uh, people reading it. Please let me know. Until next time, bye.